Let's discuss the extraordinary vessels, kidney essence. The extraordinary vessels and the kidney essence are all, uh, the extraordinary vessels are all derived directly or indirectly from the kidneys and they are all contained contain the essence or the gene which is stored in the kidneys. They circulate the essence around the body thus contributing to the integ integrating the circulation of nutritive qi and defensive qi with that of the essence. The three main extraordinary vessels, the governing, directing, and penetrating oh. vessels all starts in the lower burner in the space between the kidneys where the lower dan tian is located. Chapter 65 of the spiritual axis says the directing and penetrating vessels originate from the lower dan tian, literally bow. The actual term used by the spiritual axis is bow, which is often translated as uterus. However, while the term she bow refers to the uterus, the word bow indicates a structure that is common to both men and women. In women, it is the uterus. In men, it is the womb of sperm. Both these structures reside in the lower dantian and store essence, and as the extra extraordinary vessels originate from here, they are closely connected to essence. The overflow chi that runs into the extraordinary vessels irrigating the space between skin and muscles as the extraordinary vessels originate from the space between the kidney, kidneys and relate to the essence. Through the extraordinary vessels, the kidney essence plays a role in the defense from the exterior pathogenic factors in the space between the skin and muscles. For this reason, the extraordinary vessels are the link between the pre-heaven and post-heaven chi in so far as they are connected to the main channel and circulate the essence all over the body. The extraordinary vessels are sometimes called the root of the great avenue of pre-heaven. Li Shishan says, the extraordinary vessels are the root of the great avenue of the pre-heaven, the governing, directing, and penetrating vessels are the source of creation. The expression uh, source of creation is, the inter is interesting as it probably refers to the role of the governing, directing, and penetrating vessel in embryology as energetic blueprint along which the channel are formed. The extraordinary vessels therefore represent a deeper level of treatment related to the pre-heaven chi and the basic constitution of an individual. This applies particularly to the governing, directing, and penetrating vessels. They all derive from space between kidneys. They circulate essence, especially governing, directing, and penetrating vessels. They bring essence into play in protecting the body from extra, from exterior pathogenic factors, and they link between pre-heaven and post-heaven essence. Thank you for your attention. Now let's discuss the Yang Chao Mai or Yang Stepping Vessel Pathway. Relationships, the yin and yang relationship is yin Chao Mai with yang Chao Mai. Central, peripheral, we have the two Mai and the yin Chao Mai. Region supported by this pairing. Inner countess of the eye, occiput, shoulders and back. Opening point, bladder 62, coupled point SI3. The extraordinary vessel, Yang Chao Mai, originates at bladder 62, below the prominence of the lateral malleolus, curves briefly around the malleolus to bladder 61, and ascends anterior to the Achilles tendon to bladder 59, travels up the lateral aspect of the leg, crosses the hip, passing GB29, Ascends the flanks and the posterior aspect of the shoulders, passes SI10, continues to LI15, and runs in a curve to LI16. Crosses the supraclavicular fossa, ascends the throat, according to some authors, passing stomach nine, and reaches the face. Here, the vessel passes the points, stomach four, stomach, and stomach three. According to some authors also, stomach 2 and stomach 1 
in the infraorbital region. It then reaches bladder one, where it meets the extraordinary vessel Yin Chao Mai, ascends the forehead to the vertex, and descends posteriorly to GB20. According to the Nanjing and the Neijing, it also reaches Du16, where it enters the brain. Intersection points with other channels. Bladder 62, in a depression directly inferior to the highest prominence of the lateral malleolus over the joint space between the talus and calcaneus. Bladder 61, in a depression on the calcaneus, approximately 1.5 tsun, inferior to bladder 60. Bladder 59, 3 tsun, superior to bladder 60, in the depression between the highest prominence of the lateral malleolus and the Achilles tendon. GB29 at the midpoint of a line connecting the anterior superior iliac spine and the greater trochanter at the anterior border of the iliac crest. SI10 with the arm adducted on a line extending in a superior direction from the posterior axillary fold on the lateral on the lower border of the scapular spine. LI15, in the depression distal and anterior to the acromion between the clavicular and acromial portions of the deltoid muscle. LI16, in a depression between the acromial extremity of the clavicle and the junction of the scapular spine and the acromion. Stomach 9, approximately 1.5 soon, lateral to the anterior midline, level with the laryngeal prominence at the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. Stomach 4, when looking straight ahead on the pupil line, approximately 0.4 soon lateral to the corner of the mouth. Stomach 3, when looking straight ahead, directly below the center of the pupil, level with the lower border of the alanasi. Stomach 2, when looking straight ahead, directly below the center of the pupil, in the depression at the infraorbital foramen. Stomach 1, with the eyes looking straight forward, directly below the center of the pupil, between the eyeball and the infraorbital ridge. Bladder 1 in a depression, 0.1 soon, superior and medial to the inner canthus of the eye, GB20 on the lower border of the occipital bone in the depression between the origins of the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius. Do 16 on the posterior midline, directly below the external occipital protuberance in the depression between the origins of the trapezius. Connections with other channels or organs, kidney, bladder, gallbladder, stomach, large intestine, and small intestine primary channels, and the brain. Clinical importance, together with the yin chao mai, controls the musculature of the lower extremities, together with the yang chao mai, regulates the opening and closing of the eyes, regulates the functioning of the brain, eliminates internal and external wind from the head, removes obstructions and stagnation from the spine, especially after traumatic injuries. Thank you for your attention. Let's discuss the Chong Mai penetrating vessel, the pathway uh, part two. Penetrating vessel opening point, spine four, focal point, pericardium six, starting point, then one. Area of the body influence, feet, medial aspect of the legs, uterus, lumbar spine, abdomen, chest, heart, throat, face, and head. The penetrating vessel is very complex as it has many different functions at different levels. In a way, it could be considered to be the origin of the other extraordinary vessels, excluding governing and directing vessels as it originates in between the kidneys and spreads its chi all over the abdomen and chest and all over the body at the defensive chi level. When this energy arrives at the relevant starting points, it gives rise to the yin and yang linking vessels, the yin and yang stepping vessels, and the girdle vessel. In modern Chinese, the word chong means to infuse, charge, rush, dash, but also a uh, thoroughfare. Important place, Chinese book says that in the context of the Chong Mai, Chong has also the meaning of Ji Street, Dong, activity movement, Sing, movement, and Tong, free passage. 
all these words and the attributes they represent apply to the penetrating vessel and it is difficult to choose a single English name for it. The word penetrating as it combines the idea of brushing with that of straight channels that penetrate the body. The idea of penetrating is also related to the penetration of membranes and channels by the penetrating vessels. The penetrating vessel is described as the sea of the five yin and six yang organs, the sea of the 12 channels and the sea of blood. It is described as the sea of the five yin and six yang organs as it is a fundamental vessel which connects the pre-heaven and the post-heaven chi due to its connection with kidneys and stomach. It is connected to the kidneys as it originates in that area and it distributes essence all over the body. It is connected to the stomach as it passes through the point stomach 30, which is a point for the sea of food. Furthermore, the penetrating vessel is connected to the spleen, liver, and kidney channels along which it flows on the inner aspect of the leg down to the big toe. It is called the sea of the 12 channels because it branches out in many small capillary-like vessels that circulate defensive chi over the abdomen and chest. It is called the sea of blood because it is related to the blood in the uterus and because it controls all the blood connecting channels. Bearing in mind the comparison of the eight extraordinary vessels to a family group discussed above, the penetrating vessel is the father within this group and therefore the most important member, the center of the family nucleus and the beginning of the family. Okay. So we have here the illustration of penetrating vessel as it moves up and down. Okay. The penetrating vessel, summary of pathway, internal branch, originates inside the lower abdomen, flows through the uterus, and emerges at the perineum at REN1. Next to the abdominal branch, it emerges at stomach 30 connects with the kidney channel at kidney 11 and ascends through the kidney channel to kidney 21, then disperses in the chest and breast. Next, head branch ascends alongside the throat, chin, curves around the lips and terminates below the eyes. The spinal branch emerges from REN1 and ascends inside the lumbar spine to the level of bladder 23. Descending branch emerges from stomach 30, it descends along the inner aspect of the thigh and lower leg to the internal malleolus. On the foot at the, at the heel, it separates, one branch going to the heart to connect with the kidney channel and another branch going to the big toe to connect with the liver channel. Points of the penetrating vessel, we have the REN1, stomach 30, all kidney points from kidney 11 to kidney 21. Thank you for your attention. Now let's discuss Chong Mai or penetrating vessel as the sea of blood. The penetrating vessel is variously called the sea of blood, sea of the five yin and six yang organs and sea of the 12 channels. Chapter 33 of the Spiritual Axis says that the penetrating vessel is the sea of blood and its upper point is bladder 11 and its lower points, stomach 37 and stomach 39. Regarding the symptoms of a pathology of the sea of blood, the same chapter says, when the seas function harmoniously, there is life. When they function against the normal flow, there is disease. When the sea of blood is in excess, the person has the feeling of the body getting bigger and the person is unable to pinpoint the trouble. When the sea of blood is deficient, the person has the feeling of the body getting smaller and is unable to pinpoint the trouble. The above symptoms of fullness and emptiness of the sea of blood are rather rare and not clinically important. And it is not clear how the above points are connected to the penetrating vessel or why they are points of the sea of blood. The most important aspect of the penetrating vessels being the sea of blood is in gynecology. 
The penetrating vessel has a deep influence on the gynecological system because it originates from between the kidneys. It is responsible for the seven-year cycles of women and for the transformation of kidney essence into menstrual blood, and it flows through the uterus. Being the sea of blood means that the penetrating vessel affects many blood pathologies, which are extremely common in gynecological diseases. The penetrating vessel is involved in all cases of blood stasis in gynecological disorders. To invigorate blood of the penetrating vessel in gynecology, one needs to use the opening and coupled points, spleen 4 and P6, together with kidney 14 and liver 3. The penetrating vessel's control of all the blood connecting channels explains the connection between disharmony of blood in the uterus and the development of muscular pains, something which often occurs after childbirth. It also explains why women often suffer external invasions during menstruation. The depletion of blood in the penetrating vessel induces emptiness of the blood connecting channels and therefore the space between skin and muscles becomes empty and prone to invasion of external pathogenic factors. Apart from the gynecological system, the blood of the whole body relies for its movement and circulation on the penetrating vessel. Being the sea of blood and sea of the 12 channels, the penetrating vessel controls all the blood connecting channels. The blood connecting channels are the deep level of the luo connecting channels, a level that is connected with blood and blood vessels. The penetrating vessel through its opening and coupled points, spleen 4 and P6, affects all the blood connecting channels. As these channels are involved in blood stasis, the penetrating vessel can be used to treat blood stasis not only in the gynecological system, but anywhere in the body. Another aspect of the penetrating vessel being the sea of blood is that it is related to body hair. When blood of the penetrating vessel is abundant, it moistens the skin and promotes growth of body hair. If blood of penetrating vessel is deficient, skin is dry and the body hair brittle. Chapter 65 of the spiritual axis says, the penetrating and directing vessels go to the throat, lips, and mouth. If both chi and blood are abundant, the skin is filled and the muscles warm. If only blood is abundant, it will penetrate into the skin and the beard grows. Women have more chi than blood because they lose some of the blood with the periods. Hence, the penetrating and directing vessels carry less blood to chin and lips, and therefore, no beard grows. Another aspect of the penetrating vessel being the sea of blood is in relation to blood and heart. The penetrating vessel is related to the heart in two ways. Firstly, because it disperses in the chest. Secondly, because it is the sea of blood and the heart governs blood. Because of this connection, the penetrating vessel can be used for palpitations and anxiety during the menopause. Symptoms which are themselves caused by the decline of blood of the penetrating vessel, with consequent rebellious chi escaping upwards along the vessel. In the ancient text, one of the indications of the penetrating vessel is the nine kinds of heart pain. The penetrating vessel can also be used for irregularities of the heart rhythm. So to summarize, um, the penetrating vessel as the sea of blood controls blood of the uterus and transformation of kidney essence into menstrual blood, controls all blood connecting channels, upper point of the sea of blood, bladder 11, lower points of the sea of blood, stomach 37 and stomach 39. Blood stasis is central pathology of penetrating vessel. Blood of penetrating vessel promotes growth of beard in men, influences heart blood, palpitations and anxiety, and the heart rhythm. Thank you for your attention. Let's discuss the Chong Mai penetrating vessel, blood stasis in gynecology. Blood stasis in gynecology, the penetrating vessel is the sea of blood and its pathology is at the root of many gynecological problems. The three, the three blood pathologies that affect the penetrating vessel are blood deficiency, blood heat, and blood stasis. When there is blood deficiency, the woman may suffer from amenorrhea or scanty periods. When there is blood heat, the periods may be very heavy. When there is blood stasis, the periods will be painful and the menstrual blood will be dark with clots. 
The penetrating vessel is used particularly to invigorate the blood when there is blood stasis in the uterus. Indeed, this is the pathology of the penetrating vessel. Therefore, we can use this vessel in any case of blood stasis in the uterus. The points to use are opening and couple points, spleen 4 and PC6, the kidney 14, and spleen 10. The penetrating vessel is the vessel to use for blood stasis in gynecological disease. So we use spleen 4 on the right, pericardium 6 on the left, kidney 14, and spleen 10. The penetrating vessel and the membranes. The nature and function of the membranes have already been discussed above under the direct, directing vessel. The penetrating vessel also influences the membranes in the abdomen and chest, and indeed its syndrome of chi rebellious involves the membranes. That is, chi stagnates in the membranes and rebels upward, causing the various abdominal and chest symptoms. Next, the penetrating vessel and the female breast. The penetrating vessel disperses in the chest and the breast, and therefore its chi has a deep influence on the breast. Moreover, being the sea of 12 channels, the penetrating vessel influences all channels, including the connecting channels being the sea of blood. The penetrating vessel influences all blood connecting channels. So we have here the illustration of penetrating vessels and the female breast. There is the membrane, the connecting compartment that house the glandular, glandular lobes, lobules, Stomach channel where there is the milk ducts and glandular lobules. Chong Mai, the milk ducts, blood vessels, and blood blue. The liver channel, the nipple. Ren Mai, the milk ducts, the fat. As the female breast is rich, richly irrigated by the connecting channel, a pathology of chi stagnation in the penetrating vessel affects the breast causing breast distension and or pain in, and in the long run, breast lumps. Another way in which the penetrating vessel affects the female breast is through the membranes. The penetrating vessel there, together with the directing vessel controls the membranes in the abdomen and chest. The connecting tissues within the female breast is part of the membranes and chest stagnation in the penetrating vessel always affects the membranes, and therefore the breast. As the penetrating vessel arises from the uterus, which stores menstrual blood, and by virtue if it's being the sea of blood and controlling the blood connecting channels, the penetrating vessel is responsible for the production of breast milk after childbirth. Breast milk is a direct transformation of the menstrual blood into milk. The Chinese says blood turns white. As the period ceases after child, childbirth, the menstrual blood turns into milk and flows up to the breast via the penetrating vessel. If the chip of the penetrating vessel stagnates after childbirth, the breast milk may also come out. This is a full condition of agalapsia. That is, the milk is there, but it is difficult to express because of the chi stagnation. On the other hand, if the blood of the penetrating vessel is, is deficient, the breast milk may be lacking because there is not enough blood to be transformed into milk. This is an empty case of agalaxia. Thank you for your attention. Let's discuss classical indications of the young chow mai or the young stepping vessel. Chapter 29 of the Classic of Difficulties says, When the yang stepping vessel is deceased, the yin is slack and the yang tense. This statement is generally thought to refer to the state of the leg muscles. That is, yin is slack means that the muscles of the middle side of the leg are slack. And yang is tense means that the muscles of the lateral side of the legs are tight. Although this interpretation is correct, it should not restrict a broader interpretation of the above statement. In fact, yang and yin above could also refer to back and front, head and abdomen. Moreover, they can also be interpreted in a broad sense of excess of yang, or yang is tense, and deficiency of yin, yin is slack. 
Chapter 63 of the Simple Question suggests using the Young Stepping Vessel for eye pain. When pathogenic factors are in the Young Stepping Vessel, it will cause eye pain in the inner corner. Needle the point, half a tune below the external malleolus, twice. This is bladder 62. Needle the right side when the left eye is affected and the left side when the right eye is affected. Condition will be cured in the time it takes to walk 10 li which is a Chinese mile, which is 5.76 kilometers. This statement is interesting as it recommends contralateral needling, that is, needling the right side for afflictions of the left eye and vice versa. This is presumably due to the fact that the yin and yang stepping vessels cross over the other side when they rise to the head. This is somewhat in convergence with Western medicine as the nerve tracks from one side of the body enter the opposite side of the brain. Chapter 21 of the Spiritual Axis says, when the young stepping vessel is in excess, the eyes stay open. When the pulse of the front position of both left and right side is wiry, it indicates a disease of the young stepping vessel. This causes backache, epilepsy, apoplexy, crying like a sheep, aversion to wind, hemiplegia, and tightness of the body. He also says, in epilepsy, treat the step stepping vessels, the yang in men and the yin in women. The golden mirror of medicine gives the following indications for the yang stepping vessel. Stiff back and spine, wind in ankles and feet, aversion to wind, sweating, headache, numbness of hands and feet, upper arm cold, thunder headache, red eyes, breast abscess, deafness, epistaxis, epilepsy, limb pain, unilateral fullness, swelling and sweating of the body, dribbling of urination. When the young stepping vessel is diseased, the young is tense, there is mud walking or mania, and the eyes cannot close. It is interesting to note that in manic patients, one of the characteristic symptoms is staying awake at night, not from insomnia, but from deliberately staying up to do things. So to summarize, these are the classical indications for the young stepping vessel. From the classic of difficulties, yin is slack and the yang tense. From the simple questions, eye pain in the inner corner. Spiritual axis for eyes stay open. Li Shi Chen, backache, epilepsy, apoplexy, crying like a sheep, aversion to wind, hemiplegia, and tightness of the body. From the golden mirror of medicine, stiff back and spine, wind in ankles and feet, Aversion to wind, sweating, headache, numbness of hands and feet, upper arm cold, thunder headache, red eyes, breast abscess, deafness, epistaxis, epilepsy, limb pain, unilateral fullness, swelling and sweating of the body, dribbling of urination. From Li Shi Chen, mud walking or mania, and the eyes cannot close. So we have here a case history of a man of 43 suffering from giddiness and an ache on the lateral side of the legs. His blood pressure was high. His face was red and the muscles on the lateral side of the legs were very tight. He appeared very tense. His pulse was full, rapid and wiry, and his tongue was red. The young stepping vessel was chosen to calm the young, relax the muscles on the lateral side of the legs, subdue interior wind manifested by giddiness, and calm the mind. The successive use of its opening and coupled points, bladder 62 on the left and SI3 on the right, produced a marked improvement. Thank you very much for your attention. Let's discuss the Renmai conception vessels, the symptoms. Renmai pathway, it begins in the kidneys and moves through the urogenital organs to the perineum and CB1. The channel ascends along the anterior midline of the body to the lower lip. The lower vessels of the renmai starts at CB15 and flows into the epigastrium. Renmai symptoms, there is night sweat, insomnia, vertigo, tinnitus, hot flashes, dry mouth, pain during ovulation, increased facial hair, amenorrhea, increased sexual desire, premature ejaculation, uritis, vulvae, miscarriage, asthma, dry cap, dry skin. Red my function, 
Renmai controls the entire yin of the body and can be used to boost yin and increase kidney yin. Renmai is able to nourish blood, yin, and essence. Renmai moves qi in the uterus, heart, lungs, and liver. Renmai regulates the female cycle. Renmai and Changmai nourish the uterus during pregnancy. Renmai stands for the connection of kidney and lungs. Renmai has more yang if compared to chong mai. Palpation, all front mu alarm point located on the ren mai are palpated for pressure pain. CB3, CB4, CB5, San Jiao, CB12, the stomach, CB14, the heart, CB17, the pericardium. If more than one point is painful, a ren mai disharmony is likely. Note in general, in general, pressure pain of the move point can be produced by a pattern of the related sangpu organ. A sangpu problem is likely if the pressure pain is not reduced or just slightly reduced after treatment of the extraordinary vessel. So we have here the illustration of the palpation. Ren mai point pair, confluent point, lung 7, yin chao mai copal point. Copal point can be 6, yin chao mai confluent point. The following Sangpu disease pattern can appear similar to a Renmai problem and have to be properly differentiated. Kidney yin deficiency, liver yin deficiency, heart yin deficiency, heart chi stagnation, lung chi stagnation, liver chi stagnation. Thank you for your attention. Let's discuss phlegm heat in the lungs. Clinical manifestations, repeated attacks of a barking cough with profuse expectoration of yellow or blood-flecked purulent sputum, breathlessness, rattling sound in the throat, feeling of oppression in the chest, red face, feeling of heat, dry mouth, thirst, tiredness, loose stools. Tongue is red, swollen with a sticky yellow coating. Pulse, slippery and rapid. This condition is similar to phlegm heat cough at the acute stage. It differs from it insofar as it is a chronic condition occurring against a background of spleen deficiency, hence the tiredness and loose stools. In chronic cases, it occurs when there is a residual phlegm heat in the lungs. This is a very common cause of chronic cough at all ages from childhood to old age. Treatment principle, clear heat, resolved phlegm, restore descending of lung chi, stop cough, Tonify the spleen. Points, lung 5, lung 1, REN 12, REN 9, stomach 40, spleen 6, bladder 20, stomach 36, bladder 13, do 14, and LI 11. Reinforce REN 12, bladder 20, and stomach 36. Reduce all the others. No moxa. Do 14 and NLI 11, clear heat. Lung 5, lung 1, REN 12, REN 9, stomach 40, spleen 6, bladder 20, stomach 36, bladder 13, the same as for damp phlegm. They have already been explained. We have, So we have here a case history of an 80-year-old woman who had been suffering from a persistent cough for five years. The cough was productive of scanty, sticky yellow sputum, and she experienced a feeling of oppression of the chest. Her health was otherwise very good. She was a keen practitioner and teacher of yoga. Her body was thin and her skin was dry. Her pulse was slightly floating empty in general and slightly slippery in on the lung position. Her tongue was red, dry, and without coating in the front part. This is a case of retention of phlegm heat in the lungs occurring against a background of lung yin deficiency. The phlegm heat is indicated by the sticky yellow sputum and slippery pulse quality on the lung position, while the lung yin deficiency is apparent from the thin body, the dry skin, the floating empty pulse, and the red tongue without coating in the front part, the lung area. So this is the tongue of the 80-year-old woman with chronic cough. So this is retention of phlegm heat in the lungs against a background of lung yin deficiency. Thank you for your attention.